Good day everybody. Mike here from Northeastern Dirt Property Maintenance. I think today's video is going to be titled Guess the Chemical Composition of what I'm using on this today. Probably not too hard to figure out for guys that have been around. But put it this way. What I'm staining the deck of this uh, tag along with I don't think is going to be on the favorites list for the Minister of Environment. I just don't think it is. And uh, I don't even think, and I'm not sure, so I'll just plead absolute ignorance here. I'm not sure if it's on the banned substance list or not, but I can tell you it's a hell of a wood preservative. And I'll tell you what else. It's up to you to figure out what it is. It's kept many a train rolling down the railroad tracks for decade after decade. And uh, I can tell you, she just wicks up with this uh, cheap spruce that they put on these decks nowadays of these trailers. Like I said, I bought this trailer, this tag new. And uh, I've been waiting for it. some sunny days, dry it out a little bit, and then I was going to put the old stain doer. So I went into the old shelf uh, archives in the shed and opened up the uh, ancient cabinet and I pulled out a really good wood preservative. And uh, like I said, this stuff, uh, you're not going to find this at Home Hardware, Canadian Tire, Ace Hardware, True Value for you Americans. Uh-uh. I don't think you are anyway. Maybe you can in the States. I don't know. But I'm just hearing that they don't like this over here. So that's what I'm putting on today. You'll have to figure out what it is. It really, really soaks in good. Probably one of the best wood preservatives ever engineered. Really. Mind you, used motor oil is pretty good, too. So that's what I'm doing this morning. Beautiful, beautiful morning out here in northeastern Ontario. And uh, you take a look around, man. She's beauty out here. And the tree swallows have just arrived. They're out there fluttering around. I put up more nest boxes, and there they are. And I'm glad to have the tree swallows in now because they eat black flies, they eat mosquitoes, and there they are buzzing around. And, uh, yeah, so she's a nice morning out here. I figured we've got a good run of nice weather. So I'm just getting cracking between jobs. And I'm going to be putting a few videos out. I got them stockpiled a little. NJ's uh, hustling. You'll see that uh, Kubota 80 in action. Got a vid on that. I got a bunch of videos. Uh, One thing you want to do, I'm a stickler not on everything of course you guys if you watch my videos you know I'm not a stickler on small engines I miss their negligence but anyway as far as uh, trying to keep these decks of these trailers in good shape that 12 foot galvanized trailer that I bought over there last year Galvi 12 foot uh, little single axle landscape trailer I uh, would preserve the uh, spruce deck in that too because let's face it, these guys that are building what I call budget trailers, I'm just going to call this, this is a budget trailer. You wouldn't think it's a budget trailer when you buy it and you pay the bill. Um, in the last two years, the value of this trailer has skyrocketed between wood and steel. I understand that. But this is a budget trailer. I mean, I'm not going to try and fool anybody. And So the wood that they put on what I call these budget trailers, they don't go out of their way to... Uh, put anything high end on these trailers that's for sure you're not looking at uh, white oak here and everything else in these trailers uh-uh they're putting the cheapest lumber on them that they can and that happens to be spruce so if you want these trailer decks to last you better get a good wood preservative on them and get the best possible one you can and you know what use motor oil works fabulous i'm not saying that's what i'm using because i'm truly not using used motor oil i'm using something better what I'm using goes on paper thin and it just splashes on like water. 
there's no labels on that can either. So you look at this stuff, it just goes on and it soaks in beautiful. Love it. She's just drinking that, that spruce, and it soaks right in. And like I said, you can't find this on the shelf, this stuff. You would have found it on the shelf probably 15 years ago. 12 to 15 years ago, you'd find this on a shelf in a hardware store. Not anymore. So anyway, not knowing the future of this chemical I'm using many years ago and what was going on with it, like everything else, just like the state of California would like to ban everything, I was a little bit concerned that maybe they're going to ban the chemical. So. I went around to the country hardware stores when it was still on the shelf and I bought several gallons and uh, I actually still have some as you can tell to this day and uh, so I just used it up as I needed on the wood on my trailers trailer decks this will get two coats this trailer deck and uh, yeah that's the story of that stuff I drove around the country to the uh, country hardware stores where they sell a lot of horse products and horse fencing and fence posts and all that. And uh, they always had several gallons of this stuff on the shelf. But then there was a rumor that they were going to pull this stuff from the shelves and it was going to become a banned substance. And I don't know if it is or not, so I'll just plead ignorance on that. I don't know if it's a banned substance. So I went around and to every hardware store and I bought as much as I could. And, uh, yeah. And now it comes in handy when you need it. So that's what we're up to this morning. The birds are singing out here. And uh, I figured I better take full advantage of staining this trailer deck. Because, like I said, this is our first good run of spring weather here in northeast Ontario. And we are about uh, four and a half hours where I'm where I'm situated right now. I'll give you guys a little insight since I'm jibber jabbering here while I'm staining and working. We're about four and a half hours from Toronto, north, straight north. You just come north from Toronto, four and a half hours, and uh, that's actually who's buying all the real estate up here too now, all Toronto. Everybody's running from the big cities now. Everybody's running from the big cities and rural country life has uh, has exploded. All the lots up here are developing. Things are really hopping up here right now. With money being cheap, yes, interest rates are going up, but with money being cheap, cheap, and people running from COVID and the city life and everything else, just my assumptions anyway, that's why uh, things have really, really taken off. Actually... Right now, up here in Northeast Ontario, it's uh, completely unachievable, almost, for a young person to buy a country property, even up here. It wasn't. It wasn't two years ago before COVID. This was one of the cheapest areas around, and that's why it went like hotcakes. Everybody came here. Now, real estate values here have skyrocketed, and I mean they've really skyrocketed. And I'm doing work for people and I'm looking at the prices of homes and lots up here still in the real world relatively cheap building lots up here you can get a you can get a good solid one acre country building lot here on a gravel road right around here next to me in fact you're gonna look at about uh, sixty thousand dollars you can get a one acre lot now for fifty to sixty grand and uh, when I came up here you could get a one acre lot for 25, 28, and uh, now they're 50 to 60. So they've basically doubled in price in, in the last two years. 
And uh, that's pretty much happened with everything straight across the board up here in Northeast Ontario. And I'm sure it's happened with you guys down on stateside because I have some friends down here in the Ottawa River and they just, uh, they hauled ass this winter down to Florida looking for a place in Florida. They could not find any real estate in Florida for what they were looking for in their price range on a reasonably uh, respectable homestead in a, even in a gated community, they could not find anything. So they came back here to Northeast Ontario and away they go and we'll just see what happens. And uh, maybe we're gonna see a big real estate crash, I don't know, but that's the story on the real estate here, and it sounds like it's a story on the real estate all over the place, no matter where you go. The real estate market is uh, completely out of hand. So that's the story in the real estate. And I moved up here, if you guys watch my first video, it will be... It is, it's two years. And uh, it's two years now, I believe, pretty much right on the money. It was May of 20, I believe, that we took possession of this place. So I've been up here two years myself, and like I say, I've watched everything skyrocket. And especially, no boast, no brag, man, just a fact that, uh, especially on properties like I bought here, this property here, I've got, uh, Almost 84 acres, very close to 84 acres. You might as well say 84 acres, all deep bush. And uh, people are looking for a place to stretch their legs. A lot of people, and they're looking for a place to hunt, and they're looking for a place to uh, take their dog for a walk, make bush roads, cut firewood. They're just looking to have a garden. They're looking to stretch their legs work from home or completely retire and uh i seen in the beginning of covid things were taking off just slightly taking off when i put my house up for sale and uh, i could see something was going on i had lost out on two places before this house so i thought i better get my ass move and i told her we better get over there and get this house bought real quick or else it's gonna get bought right out from underneath us in it and uh to be brutally honest, this homestead I'm on right now, before COVID, they couldn't sell it. No one was interested in this area. You could not give away. Three, four years ago, you could hardly give away real estate up here. It was dirt, dirt cheap. You could get anything you wanted up here in this Northeast Ontario. They were giving it away. Lots were dirt cheap. Homes were dirt cheap. In fact, I believe my homestead right here was on the market for well over a year. No buyers. No one was interested. Then COVID hit and things went crazy. People wanted out of the city. They wanted to escape. And uh, now, and uh, it's so bad up here now, you cannot buy real estate on conditional. You can't go into a real estate deal up here with conditions unless it's really, really something not attractive at all that nobody really wants, then no problem. But if you're looking for a respectable homestead now in Northeast Ontario and it has pretty much, you know, outbuildings and a little bit of land with it, you can't have conditions. You have to have your home, your home pre-sold or be willing to carry two mortgages or just have a lot of money, whatever. But you can't have conditions. You have to, you have to have everything aligned and you have to be ready to go with the money in the bank and when something comes up up here now, especially with land, 20, 30, 40 acres with a shop and house, boom, you got to be ready to lay the cash down. And you actually almost got to be ready now for a bidding war because uh, that's where land has gone up here. Very expensive. And I'm thankful I got in when I did because it would take me a whole lot more money to buy this homestead now than what it would have two years ago. Incredible amounts of money. And it would be money I wouldn't want to spend. And it makes it very, very tough 
for even young people that were raised in this small town, up and coming young working class people to afford a house up here. And you know, you have to feel for these guys who want their own house or girls or couples and they can't slip into anything unless you go whole hog into a big mortgage. And uh, I don't know, I can't see that. I've never been in that position, so I don't wanna do it. I have always bought down Southern Ontario I bought a few select properties down there in my life, and uh, I've always bought shitholes. Always dumps and fixed them up to the best of my ability, and uh, that got me a long way. I was never afraid to take on a house that was completely run down as long as it had good bones. And with myself, and with the help of a real good carpenter, you know, fix up a rundown homestead. And I did that on uh, several occasions to get myself ahead in life, and it got me ahead in life. And that's just the way it is. But now, it's very hard to find those deals to get ahead. You can, but uh, you really gotta buy some uh, real, real, real tough stuff. And almost everything sells up here. Teardowns and everything, it all sells. So, Anyway, I'm just jibber-jabbering while I'm staining this trailer deck, so have a look. She went from that just standard spruce decking to the first coat of wood preservative. And that stuff goes on, look at rusty red, and then she dries right out. And it just goes on like water, and it soaks right in. Beautiful. So it's coming along. I'm going to put a second, I'm going to put a second coat on it. So, you guys will just have to uh, figure out for yourself what chemical I'm using here. And it works excellent. And if you can ever get your hand on a, a jug of this from some old boy who's got it in the back shed, don't shy away from it, man. It's a great wood preservative. And uh, just thought I'd show you guys what I'm doing out here. I'm in between jobs right now. And uh, I like to stay on top of this trailer, and this trailer also needs an oil spray. This trailer is going to get a complete oil spray underneath and uh, get this thing in good shape. So when it sits idle, I don't want it rusting away on me either. All right, you guys, I just thought I'd uh, have a little chit-chat with you on a beautiful, beautiful spring day. And uh, she's coming nice. Got the garden coming along all laid out nicely over there got the dodge ram 3500 cummins out and the nissan's gone inside cleaned up and it's put away in the shop in the corner and i'm driving the 3500 24 valve nv 4500 four wheel drive dually and uh, i'll show you guys that truck a little bit that's uh that's a nice truck nice driving truck and uh nice little tow truck too all right you guys i know this video encompassed a little bit of everything but Hey, why not share what's going on here? And another thing, when you get this stuff on your skin, boy, it's hard to come off. That's why I'm wearing gloves. All right, I'll talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in, you guys. And I'm going to keep working on this a little bit and put a second coat on. Okay, thanks, bye.